This is EA Sports PGA Tour coverage coming your way. Rich Lerner alongside Frank Nabilo at the famous old course, the home of golf in St. Andrews. And Frank, so often, even the greats of the game, when they come here for the very first time, they scratch their heads and they say, I don't get it. Why all the commotion about the old course? And then they play it a few times and they begin to come around. What happens to people after they've played the old course a few times? Well, it's going to sound like a cliche, but you fall in love with it. And I'm like everybody else. When you first, when I first played it, I didn't think it was special. Then when I played it the next time, the wind was different the next time. And after all these years, every time you play it, it just appears a little different. But one thing you should do, take a local caddy. Uh, they'll point you into uh, some interesting directions to try and navigate all those evil little pot bunkers. I did take one of the local caddies and I pulled one left into the junk. And like every other golfer, I turned to my caddy and I said, hey, Jimmy, is that okay? And he said, does that look okay? Hit another one? And I did. Second shot for Miguel Angel Jimenez. Good looking shot right here. On the green, and a chance for Birdie here in the first hole. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. Bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. Frank, this first hole, all about the swoke and burn. Yeah, it, uh, it cuts in so close to the front of that putting surface. If there's just a puff of wind, then all of a sudden that burn that you could just step across very much comes into play. This is a long putt. Really the key is the speed. If it drops, that's a bonus. Might be. Could be. That's good. Might like it. Oh, they're going to love it. What a putt. Getting set now over the putt. And it's a long way to the hole from here. Never easy. Just a couple of feet. Even par early on. Did the job right there. 
Trying to get the round off to a good start. Frank, we're at the second hole, and what's ahead? Well, the ideal tee shot, just uh, a little over that gorse bush in front of you, which is down the right side. That's the best angle in, but it also brings in a little bit of trouble. But um, if that pin is anywhere towards the middle of this double green, then really you want to be coming in from the right side. Just a good solid tee shot right there, about 280 yards. Whoop, this has taken off on a weird line. And it's going to be in the rough, it looks like. Well, Mr. Ball does not meet Mr. Fairway. It's off, 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 rough. Well, this one has a chance to be really good. Second shot coming out of the rough here. Not terrible, but not his best. Yeah, outside chance really for, uh, for Birdie, but um, really it was a, a rather poor approach shot. Set for his next shot from a good position in the fairway. What makes the old course at St. Andrews so memorable is not just the round of golf, but it's the setting. It's the old town. It's people watching from the windows nearby. All of that makes it really a good experience. Frank, I'm not saying he should pull out driver here, but this is a long putt. Greens are fast, though. You never know. Good line, good pace. Might have a chance. Frank, that's just a really good putt right there. Yeah, that's why you call lag putting. You get outside a certain distance, and really your mind has to be about two putting and not trying to be a hero. Boy, this could be a tough one right here, Frank. It's a very long putt, Rich. Obviously, it's difficult, uh, but he still has a shot to sink this one for birdie. Frank, that's not one you're necessarily thinking about making. No, just a uh, good putt, though. There's no two ways about that. He's putting well. Been pretty good all day from this distance, just trying to take care of business. And so just getting started, even par so far. So just a formality here. Routine stuff for Rory, that's a par. Makeable putt right here. He is currently sitting at one under for the round. Good score going, now at two under par. On the tee box here at the third now, Frank, all these holes look relatively straightforward. Can a golfer get lured in a kind of a false sense of security off the tee here at the old course? No, well, you can. This hole, uh, the third hole, even shorter than the second, so reachable. But um, a lot of people tend to bail out towards the left. That's the middle of the golf course. And that leaves you a devilish little pitch or short wedge across that big gaping bunker that protects both the uh, third and the 15th green. So once again, I want to drive the ball down the right side, but there's a series of pot bunkers there.
Frank, this one's not looking good. Yeah, certainly not down the fairway line, heading toward the rough. You have to think he'll be happy with that, given that it looked like it was headed right for the rough. Yeah, it looked like that was the only place it was going to finish. But, um, well, <clears throat> it's a little bit unexplainable. Let's see what he does from here now. Lucky break. Second shot, good look at the green. Beautiful approach shot there and a good chance to take advantage. One hundred thirty five yards to the hole and sitting nicely in the fairway. This one looks like it's headed right for the middle of the dance floor, Frank. Rather nice shot, I would say. Second shot. Needs a pair of binoculars to see the hole. Tough game, Frank. You can hit 300-yard drives and miss three-foot putts. Yeah, there's the ecstasy, and that's the agony. Locked in on the read and the speed. That was not a very good read right there. Miguel Angel Jimenez has this for birdie. One under early in the round. So a tester from four feet. Two under on the day. He has this attempt for par. Still playing even for the day after the par. Frank, the challenge begins to intensify here at the fourth. Yeah, a bit risky if you try and hit it down the right side. Um, just about every player I've seen over the years has sort of aired a little bit to the left. That's a safer tee shot, but it does set up a very daunting second. And it looks like it's in the rough there, Frank. It might not be as bad as it looks. This is not hitting in the right direction. You know, it looks like it's going to be in the rough. Well, that ball nestled down just a bit in that heavy rough. Frank, this one is veering far to the left. They'll pay a little bit of a price for missing the fairway here because from that rough, you cannot control the spin on the golf ball. Ball sitting down here in the rough, he's digging in.
This is definitely not going down the fairway. It doesn't look good. I think it's going to be in the deep rough. Frank, better than we thought it was going to be. Yeah, that looked like it was headed for that thick stuff the whole way, but uh, a little fortunate. But then I guess you're allowed that in this game. Second shot coming out of the rough here. did the prudent thing there, didn't he? Yeah, in the end, really, you could have turned that into a disaster instead. Actually, a good chance, really, to uh, perhaps get away with par. Oh, solid strike right in the heart of the green. Superb shot. Uh, that's, uh, that's as good as it's going to get. There's going to be no worries about making that one. Here's the colorful Spaniard, Miguel Angel Jimenez, with the approach shot. set now over the putt. Wow, that hurt. It did. Shot gone forever. Very well done. Almost made it. Yeah, there'll be no stress for the next one. Makeable putt right here, currently sitting at one under for the round. Stays at one under with that par. Just a couple of feet. Just a shade over par, plus one. Lining this one up for par. Has it, and he's two under par. Par fives, this is where players look to make the move in a major championship. How does this fifth hole par five measure up, Frank? Well, if you can avoid the bunkers, um, they're actually left and right, but uh, especially that little group of three bunkers, then it sets up well. It'll be a blind second shot, but you try and guide your second shot between the two bunkers on the hill in front of you, which are called the spectacles. Frank, right where you want to be. Oh, wouldn't be better if it was on a tee.
Well, the tee shot has landed in the bunker. Good lie in the fairway, but a good chance to make something happen here. Duffner's such a regular guy. He's not the guy with the fancy pants, all belt buckle and no belly. This is a guy who skips the 500 crunches before breakfast and heads right for the bacon and eggs, and then backs it up with 68, something like that. One of the best uh, players, Tita Green, that I've seen over the last 25 years. Uh, when, when you talk about efficiency, um, you get more miles to the gallon out of Duffner than you get out of a hybrid. And from the fairway for his second shot here, Frank, that ball's sitting up like it's on plush carpeting. Rich, if you and I had lies like that every time, we'd still be playing this game for a living. All right, Frank, second shot. Yeah, it looks like a good lie. Um, just take maybe half a club more than the distance, uh, distance allows. Still got to check the wind. Don't have to fly the ball all the way to the flag from here. Out of the sand and back on the fairway. Yeah, good shot. Just uh, really utilized that little bit between the ears. Realized he couldn't reach the green and instead opted for fairway. Not terrible, but not his best. Yeah, outside chance, really, for, uh, for Birdie, but um, really it was a, a rather poor approach shot. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. Bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. So this is the third shot to the par five. Pretty long putt right here. You'd be happy to get it to within two, three feet. That's all he wanted to do there. Yeah, that's touch. And when you think from that distance, chances of making are, uh, are almost none. So to guarantee a two putt, well done. Boy, this could be a tough one right here, Frank. It's a very long putt, Rich. Obviously, it's difficult, uh, but he still has a shot to sink this one for birdie. Ooh, almost fell, just a few inches from dropping. Sometimes the game just isn't fair. Routine stuff for Rory, that's a par. Could really use this one. It's for birdie. And with that, he'll go to three under. Clean this up with a tap. Good work right there. He'll settle for par. Now at the sixth, not a particularly long hole, Frank, par four. Yeah, semi-blind tee shot. Um, you've got an idea where you want to hit, but uh, there's a, a series of three bunkers. They're called the coffins down the left side, as well as some pop bunkers down the right. So this requires a very accurate tee shot. Frank, did you hear the sound of that coming off the club face? It was like a cannon. Excellent drive, Frank, right where you want to be.
We moved that one out there, but he is not going to like the lie. Uh, that moved down in the rough. Second shot for Miguel Angel Jimenez. Here's to be what they call a commercial play. Very solid. He's knocked it on the green, but not in a great position. This is a difficult chance coming up here. Long birdie try. Second shot. Good look at the green. Staring at a 125-yard shot now. Frank, you played in conditions all over the world. Here come the winds now. What's the mindset? Well, this is really what separates the men from the boys. This is where you've got to tell yourself, and it's an advantage to you. Um, obviously, the scores will go up a little bit, um, given the conditions. But once again, this is going to suit the stronger player today. You like the old phrase, swing easy when it's breezy? Definitely when you're hitting it into a head breeze, but um, if down breeze, tee it up a little bit, try and ride that wind some more. Pretty good stroke right there, just hit it through the break. Well, it's that sort of distance. If it goes in, it's a bonus. And getting ready for the putt. Just singes the edge, Frank. Yeah, but at least he's burning the edges. You know you're hitting good parts. Here's Jason's birdie putt. And you have to like that. Four under. Some tester from four feet. This to avoid a huge number. This is for bogey. So with that, the score is now at even par. So they'll tap in. Did the job right there. Continuing from the oldest championship in the game. It's the Open Championship at the old course at St. Andrews here at the seventh hole now, Frank. Yeah, you try and hit your tee shot over a, a little uh, stone there. It's called the March Stone. That's a good line for, like, left of center. And, uh, well, if you can just work it off that, good tee shot. You're only going to have a pitch in here to a, a green that's set up very high. Right out of the center of the bat. Did you hear that? That is tasty looking right there, Frank. Just a perfect spot in the fairway. That is prime real estate. How do you get a lie like that? Seriously, you could hit any club from there. Frank, he is one of the longest hitters in the game, but at some point, you have to hit a fairway. Yeah, he's uh, certainly not the straightest. I think that was the bit you're going to put in the middle. This is not hitting in the right direction. No, it looks like it's going to be in the rough. How tough is this going to be now from the rough, Frank? Oh, it's tough to say, Rich. I mean, so much is going to depend on that lie. I'm going to need a little bit of luck. Second shot from the rough. It's on the way. And it generates some momentum here at the seventh hole. 
This for birdie. Jason Duffner getting set for his second shot. He'll need to be strong with this. Seems to like it. Looks like it's headed for the green. Birdie chance here. Very long putt, though. Got to be a little careful if it gets away on him. This one's tracking. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. Just a sensational putt. Settles in over the putt. And this will be a five-foot putt here. The pride of Auburn, Alabama, Jason Duffner with a birdie. Even par currently. Still even par for the day. Frank, now at the par three eighth, and how challenging is this hole? Well, it's called short on the, on the scorecard, but um, massive green. The problem here is trying to hit it close. A lot of little subtle breaks and undulations in this green, and often you see long, long birdie putts here. Chance for birdie after that beautiful shot. Jason Duffner with a birdie bid. <laughs> that had to really hurt, Frank, because it looked good all the way. Well, this will test his metal. Very well done. Almost made it. Yeah, there'll be no stress for the next one. And it's a long way to the hole from here. Never easy. Makes the putt and goes to one under. Boy, this could be a tough one right here, Frank. It's a very long putt, Rich. Obviously, it's difficult, uh, but he still has a shot to sink this one for birdie. Oh, do that. Just needs to keep it steady here over the putt. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Always so important to finish your first nine holes on a positive note here at the Open Championship. Yeah, the ninth hole, this is the most extreme part, furthest away from the clubhouse um, in the middle of the loop here. A good drive, though, that avoids those bunkers has every chance of finding this par four with your tee shot. Oh, I like that.
Frank, that ball's sitting up like it's on plush carpeting. Rich, if you and I had lies like that every time, we, we'd still be playing this game for a living. Frank, no reason here to think we're going to see anything other than another good shot. Yeah, in a great flow, and uh, golf like this looks easy. It should be pretty good right there. On the safe side. Good chance now for a birdie. That was an outstanding play. Well, it's almost a guarantee there after that shot. Now one of the best personalities in the game, Miguel Angel Jimenez, ready for his approach. set now over the putt. Frank, just a surgical touch out there. And the scorecard reflects yet another birdie. Well, he's been doing this a long time, all over the world, making birdies. Miguel Angel Jimenez. Now two to the good side. It's a very makeable putt here. He is currently five under for his round. Continues to amaze yet another birdie. And what a day it's been. Well, that was a nearly flawless performance on the front side. But, Frank, we know it's an 18-hole game, isn't it? That's right. Now's not the time to pat yourself on the back. Well, the tee shot has landed in the bunker. Yeah. Great strike. And a great result. Sitting up, good chance to attack the flag. Second shot for Miguel Angel Jimenez. Here's to be what they call a commercial play. Very solid. 
early part of this back nine and a good approach shot. And now we'll have this for birdie. Ready for a second shot, trying to knock it on the green. Second shot from a hundred out. So Frank out of the bunker and back into play. Yeah, the late Bobby Jones used to say the hardest shot in golf is always the next one. Well, by getting the ball back in play, he just made that a little easier. Standing over this putt, concentrating on the read. Good looking putt right here. You might like it. Maybe I'll go ahead and fill it up. It's no snack though. Par for McElroy, but you're just waiting for that moment when he hits that accelerator and pulls away. 14 feet to the hole. This putt for par. Holding steady now at two under par. Frank, what are we looking at here at the famed par three 11th at the old course? Well, the most difficult, there is only two par threes here at the old course, and this one's called high elevated green, and you've got to fly that bunker that protects the front of the green. That's called the Strath Bunker. Uh, you really take anything on the screen. You make a two hit, you'll make a move on the field. Well, he's on the green, but still plenty of work left. About a 25-footer coming up. Frank, obviously, way too much club there. <laughs> you you got to think something like that, or at least misread the wind. This is never going to sit down. This one looks like it's headed right for the middle of the dance floor, Frank. Rather nice shot, I would say. Birdie chance here. Very long putt, though. Got to be a little careful if it gets away on him. Oh, I thought he had that. You couldn't ask for much more than that, except to make it. And getting ready for the putt. Ooh, almost fell just a few inches from dropping. 
sometimes the game just isn't fair. Miguel Angel Jimenez has this for birdie. Frank, you know what gets me about this game? Here a person makes a, a legitimate effort, makes a good stroke, and that ball spins around and is just laughing at the player. And now what's left, you could breathe on that ball, it counts the same as a 300-yard drive. It's not right. But it's the beauty of the game. So they'll tap in. Did the job right there. And now at one under for the round. Now at the 12th, and Frank, when you put the peg in the ground here, are you licking your chops? Well, you are, unless you're playing into a head breeze. Because if you are playing a head breeze, then you've got to worry about the four bunkers that are in the middle of this fairway. Um, touch of help, or if you're a long hitter, then all you've got to do is worry about that little pot bunker just short of this green. There is gorse left and right. In the thick stuff. Thick? That's brutal out there. Frank couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, just the lie there, too. It is sitting up like it's teed up. Second shot from the rough. It's on the way. Yay! Early part of this second nine and a good approach shot. Now, pretty good chance for birdie. Rich, one of the problems with the 12th hole is the severity of these ridges on the green. Uh, if you've got a pitch shot or a short, coming, short shot coming in here, not only do you have to get the distance right, but you've got to get the right spin on the ball, whether it kicks forward or you want it to stop. Pretty good all day from this distance, just trying to take care of business. This can be a cruel game at times. Very well done, almost made it. Yeah, there'll be no stress for the next one. Duffner will try to find his calling here with this birdie putt. Can't birdie them all, Rich. Just five feet left. That's a birdie for McElroy. He's just so explosive. Here's Jason Duffner on the putting green. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall.
Good roll. Solid. That's a par. Here at the par four, 13th hole at the old course, Frank, what's the best play, power, or do you go with precision? Well, you'd like a nice mixture of both there, Rich. If you can take those coffins out of play, that's the name for those series of bunkers sort of down the middle, then obviously you've got a much shorter shot coming in, and then you've got a chance to actually have a full view of this green. Oh, I liked that. Long and straight. That's how you do it. Frankie's cranking it and banking it. Giant drives, a boatload of birdies. What a round. Yeah, these are the days you just dream for. Uh, we know golf's not that easy. But on a day like today, savor it and just keep going. Keep doing it. Second from an excellent lie. Not too bad. It's about 23 feet away. He didn't hit the flag stick, but he still has a chance. From a perfect position, ready to play his next shot. Looks like it's going to find the target. Just needs to keep it steady here over the putt. Wow, I can't believe he found the cup on that one. Clean up on aisle five. Well, he's been doing this a long time, all over the world, making birdies. Miguel Angel Jimenez. Beautiful roll on that one, right in the bottom. These putts keep the round together. Starting to feel it now, three under. Frank, you can actually play this 14th hole by taking a detour to another hole on the front side. Explain. Yeah, that's the fourth hole. The fourth hole is adjacent to the 14th, and if you're in a little bit of trouble off the tee, there's nothing wrong with playing the 14th as a zigzag style par five. So that means the drive, if it doesn't go down the right, you go further left and then back to the green. But uh, it's a safer way, but a much longer option. That ball's run out certainly over 300 yards, Frank. Call it about 310. <laughs> Offline, and, and I think that one's headed for the rough. 
You have to think he'll be happy with that, given that it looked like it was headed right for the rough. Yeah, it looked like that was the only place it was going to finish. But, um, well, <clears throat> it's a little bit unexplainable. Let's see what he does from here now. Lucky break. That one needs to hit a tree or something because it is headed out of bounds. Oh, that's off the beaten track. That's got five minutes to find it. Second shot coming out of the rough here. Normally you'd say that's a bad tee shot, but this is a patent match. Frank, way offline all day long. Yeah, this is uh, this is a head scratcher, really. Seen him play before. Normally much better than this. This is uh, this is abnormal, that's for sure. Nice position, short grass, second shot. Well, he'll have to get up and down from the bunker to save his par. Second shot coming up here at the par five. We are about 170 yards from the hole. Well, there's a big green, and they're going to use every inch of it. Midway through this back nine could use this birdie here at the 14th. Anything you do differently with your setup? Um, just dig my feet into the sand a little bit more, but make sure you focus on the exact spot on the ball you want to hit. Did the smart thing there, Frank. Took his medicine back out onto the fairway. He'll be disappointed with that, no doubt. Yeah, swing didn't quite look right on that one. Third shot coming up now from the bunker. Settles in over the putt. Well, you couldn't ask for much more than that, except to make it. It's a bogey attempt for Duffner. On the way. Oh, what a beautiful roll right there. Dead center. Not a gimme, but well within his range.
keeps the momentum going with that putt, stays at three under. Putt for par, he needs one. Did the job right there. Frank, the 15th here at the old course, just a classic example of Lynx golf, where you might be aiming for something that isn't even on the golf course. Exactly. There's a, a nice line there. In between the two humps that you can see in front of you off the tee, if you keep looking down, you'll see the church steeple. That's the perfect line for the tee shot. Got to be careful with the second shot coming up. Um, you see the 16th tee and out of bounds to the right of this green and that little pot bunker that protects the front. He has given this one the full treatment. Perfect release through the ball. And this shot, he is on the fairway, over 300 yards. Now, this is not hitting in the right direction. You know, it looks like it's going to be in the rough. Into the tall cabbage, that ball is swallowed up. There's something about a well-hit shot. Second shot from the rough. It's on the way. Frank did the prudent thing there, didn't he? Yeah. In the end, really, you could have turned that into a disaster instead. Actually, a good chance, really, to uh, perhaps get away with par. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. The bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. On the 15th green, in regulation, but not yet in the hole. This is about a 30-footer, and he'll look at it from a couple of different angles just to try to get a feel for it. Let's see what McElroy does now with his second. Miss hit, wrong club. What happened there, Frank? All of the above, maybe. That's a little bit of a head scratcher. It wasn't that hard a shot. This is a cross-country special. Oh, I thought he had that. Pretty good stroke right there, just hit it through the break. Well, it's a sort of distance. If it goes in, it's a bonus. And getting ready for the putt. How does that not go in? Amazing. Stroke looked good. Uh, line looked good. Just did not take that final break. Jimenez has this one for par. <laughs> Missed on that one, Frank. Yeah, not a problem. Needs this for par. And that's a par for Jason Duffner, the 2013 PGA champion.
has it, and he's two under par. Clean this up with a tap. Now at minus two for the day. Headed for home now, partner. The 16th hole, and what are we looking at here? Well, you have to avoid the principal's nose. Otherwise, you're going to finish up in the principal's office. They'll pay a little bit of a price for missing the fairway here because from that rough, you cannot control the spin on the golf ball. Nothing to argue about there, right in the fairway. The second shot now to the par four. See if he can get this one to drop here at the 16th for a birdie. Second shot coming out of the rough here. That looked like a miss hit, Frank. The lie was okay. It's a little surprising. Maybe wrong club. Yeah, about 145 yards left here. That should be pretty good right there. On the safe side. Well, in the sand, but it has been raked nicely, looking for something positive. Frank, I'm not saying he should pull out driver here, but this is a long putt. Greens are fast, though. You never know. Good line, good pace. Might have a chance. Could it be? Sinks it. Unbelievable. This is a really long putt. Difficult birdie opportunity. Pretty chance here. Very long putt, though. Got to be a little careful if it gets away on him. Takes it to three under for the day. 
locked in on the read and the speed. Par for McElroy, but you're just waiting for that moment when he hits that accelerator and pulls away. Now at the 17th tee, and Frank, this is really when you begin to feel the weight and the history of the old course bearing down on you. And you also feel the nerves as well, because you're having to hit it not just at a fairway or over a bush, but over the corner of an out of bounds. And uh, you'll see it, there's a little sign up there that says Old Course and Country Club. So you've got to pick the exact letter for the line that you want to hit it across. Hit it down the right side, this hole certainly becomes shorter. Left you find the left and short, you find the road, the road hole bunker. Uh, a little right and long, and well, there's a chance of going out of bounds or on the road itself. Frank, not the longest hitter, but sometimes you win tournaments by putting it in a good spot, and that's where we are right here, 280 yards out. Yeah, 280 down the middle of the fairway. That'll never get you in trouble. That's been the story of the day, hacking it out of the rough. Gonna have grass stains on the shoes come the end. Rich, do you think we should tell him this fairway out there? Yeah, he's been in the rough all day long. Now from a good position in the fairway, his second shot. Oh, this is taken off on a weird line. And it's going to be in the rough, it looks like. Good lie in the fairway, but a good chance to make something happen here. Frank, what's so compelling about rivalries in sports is that athletes need each other if they're going to go to great heights. Joe Frazier needed Muhammad Ali to solidify his legend. Jack Nicklaus probably needed Arnold Palmer to go to a place that he had not been. And I think that's true across the board as we look at rivalries in sports. I think it defines careers, Rich. Uh, it's not until those players retire that they realized how important it was to have that, that foe. You know, so often we're, we're living in the, presence, in the present like we are now with Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy. And it's not for years to come that we'll realize the sport wouldn't have been the same with one without the other. Third shot now for Jason Duffner. Played that one on the commercial side, as they say in the professional game, inside 30 feet. Yeah, 27 feet to be precise, but um, to make it from there, that's asking for a bit. Frank, you like his chances to walk away with a par here? Well, with a good shot, Rich, yeah, that's certainly on the cards in that. And um, when you think, you just ride a par down at the end of the, end of the hole, don't tell anyone about it. It certainly won't affect the scorecard at the end of the day, so that's the goal right here. Great knees, great hands in this shot. Yeah, touch. You, you, you have to have that feel. You have something between the ball and the club face, so it's a different feel, but you also have to have imagination. Did the smart thing there, Frank. Took his medicine back out onto the fairway. 17. Settles in over the putt. That's just a poor putt right there. No other way to say it. And a drop shot, a bogey at 17. The inimitable Miguel Angel Jimenez has this for par. Oh, he's gonna love it. Great putt.
Not a gimme, but well within his range. That takes him to one under on the day. So a tester from four feet. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Frank, here at the 18th, so much history has been made through the years. Yeah, one of my uh, favorite memories, um, I remember, you know, Jack Nicklaus when he beat Doug Sanders in that playoff. Um, you know, the famous sort of short putt that Doug Sanders missed. But really, the great moment that stands out was Seve making that 15-footer across the hill in 1984 wearing the blue sweater. Not only did he win the Open Championship, but he beat a tremendous field that included Bernard Langer, Tom Watson, Fred Couples, Lanny Watkins, Faldo, and Greg Norman. It was an amazing Open Championship. And I love that fist pump. It was pure savvy. All that fire, all that passion came flying out. And that's where you just sort of fell in love with the game. Jason Duffner getting set for his second shot. Should be safely on deck. That will be a great look at Birdie. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. Bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. This is the second shot at the par four. Really not much to this. The only issue would be a lack of concentration or focus. You've got to be kidding me. That was right on the edge. I tell you, he wants to do over there. Duffner trying to call a birdie. Charles Barkley is Auburn's most famous basketball player. This guy is Auburn's most famous golfer, that's for sure. Jason Duffner, nice work for birdie. So just a formality here. Did the job right there. <laughs> Finished with a final score of 69. Frank, solid effort today. What's your assessment? Um, golf like that can certainly uh, result in wins, that's for sure. But um, more importantly, the opportunity to get one. 